Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back and take a look at everything going on in the world of open source, Linux, Penguins, laughter. Um, not shoplifting though, Pedro. Not shoplifting. No, no, <laughs> we don't. We don't endorse that over here on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Tune in on Saturday, and the conversation may change a little bit. <laughs> don't be like that. Hey, everyone, how's it going? <laughs> I'm Ben Stone, it's Joe Bryant, and that voice you heard was one Pedro Matias showing yeah. me live. What's going on, everyone? It's another <laughs> exciting day. Aww. Jill, you, you wrote the most, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, what have okay. you been up to? Well, a lot. I just got my Acer 43-inch 4K computer monitor in the mail yesterday. Why is it Yay! not on your desk, Jill? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we, we, we had promises of desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! We, did, we, we didn't have that. I I was told. No, mm -hmm. it, will oh, it will go yes. on my desk. <laughs> yeah, I gotta clear out about thirty computers from my desk and put it on here. <laughs> Don't hoard kids. But, yes, <laughs> but I am eventually gonna hang it from the wall on a nice arm so I can move it around. But I do need to clear off my desk, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this Saturday, we're having a Linux Chicks LA social uh, meetup. Uh, we're going to have a lunch um, in downtown LA to get to know our new members, some of them uh, new ones from Scale. So that'll be really awesome. And we're going to talk about our future plans and conferences. We have some conferences we're doing coming up. So that's cool. <laughs> right on, right on. Cool. What's up, Pete, baby? Mm -hmm. Well, over here, I was actually very happy when Ven posted a certain article in German on Whew. Discord earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I didn't know what <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, no, it was the one about the uh, the Ryzen 3000s and the support for current gen motherboards. And uh, apparently there was a bit of a brouhaha brewing uh with msi and, we'll and totally talk about it because it's in the show notes yes we will totally talk about it but yes i was very happy just like oh that's about 150 pounds i don't have to spend very good very good <laughs> so i was disappointed after reading an article earlier <laughs> <laughs> no it is good news we're definitely going to be talking about that a little bit later um i was excited i i have you have Amazon Prime, right? Everyone has Amazon yep. Prime? Yes. If you don't, there's been, you know, I didn't have Amazon Prime for a time. I have my personal account for a business account. I was like, no, we're not balling that hard. So we just have the whatever it gets there when it gets there. I don't even know how long it takes, like a week. But I still had a, I'd ordered the bits and bobs for the Threadripper system. And I got a price alert from amazon itself I was like hey man that thing because you know amazon does this when you buy something it tells you to buy the same thing again for about a week later yeah so it gives me, it's like, <laughs> yes. hey man that uh, thing you just bought the price went down like 40 bucks i was like <laughs> personally if it was me and just my cash i was like yeah whatever man I was like, well, see if we can save some money we might be able to get something else for the show and i saw it and it hadn't shipped yet but i canceled it so that's my little life hack with Amazon, mm -hmm. if uh, <laughs> wait, and you can, if it hasn't shipped, you can cancel it. Then I kid you not, 30 minutes later, as soon as I place that order, it's like, boom, it shipped. Uh. Like 15 minutes later, less than an hour after that, Amazon's like, yeah, price to drop another 60 bucks. Deal yes. with it. But it's already shipped. <laughs> can't cancel it. It's like touche. Still oh, save boy. money. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's enough <laughs> rapping about that. Everyone's favorite, favorite replacement iNet uh, system D has got a little bit of an update. <laughs> yeah, we got to talk about 242. that. Yeah, <laughs> two forty two. It's a thing. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of down with this uh, because this is going to bring some things that are going to let you boot a system um, on the kernel, kernel command line, and you, you could use this for like a boot and nuke setup since the underlying root device is not modified. And all the changes will be lost during a reboot. And you think like a classroom PC, or if you have somebody in your life that doesn't know how to compute. I mm -hmm. like that. That was the only thing that stuck out to me. There's mm -hmm. a gang of stuff in here, Jill. You had some other things that you saw on this update. Yeah. So there's a new command called systemd analyze cat config. 
And it's a new feature to display configuration spread over multiple files, such as file as system and user presets and new dev rules. And it's actually very uh, similar to the system CTL uh, cat command, um, but it works on config files instead, which is really awesome. And now using a supported bootloader like SD boot, system CTL can be used to request a reboot into the bootloader menu or specific bootloader entry with the new bootload menu and bootload entry options to a boot command, a reboot command. And that's that's really, really cool. I'm going to be testing that out <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I read through all of that and I'm reading, oh, mm -hmm. new ways to manage, <laughs> you know, the thing that init is supposed to do, which is, you know, the starting of processes. Yeah, that that's great. Oh, new ways to manage your network. Huh? New ways to manage your boot. Okay, yeah. <laughs> new ways to manage just about everything. Uh, it already did some bit of file system management, uh, but now it does even more. And it's like, oh, so it's more ways to customize your GNU plus system D distro, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Richard Solomon reportedly ecstatic. <laughs> It is free software, yeah. It is free software, right? <laughs> are, you, are you still the idiot? It's becoming SysHost V. It is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is. <laughs> Just yeah. look at the change log. It is. Pedro, you messed up my joke. <laughs> I'm like, not yet. It's already there. <laughs> I do like the That's, nuke and pave yeah. option, though. I think that would be, yeah. that, that can be used in a couple of different ways. But uh, Fedora has a update that i honestly never thought i'd see hmm. yep Ever. and uh hot on the heels of uh mp3 being you know having its license released into the public domain now we have mp1 and mp2 following the exact same path so effective immediately according to tom calloway uh, the mm -hmm. M mpeg1 and mpeg2 video implementations are permitted in fedora so with the one caveat that if you have uh, an MPEG-2 DVD uh, that is, you know, DRM encrypted, then that is not permitted because Fedora. You yeah. figure out <laughs> their licensing scheme because, honestly, I've tried <laughs> and I failed miserably. So, whatever. But it's good to see that at least, you know, MPEG-1 and MPEG-2 files are now available and this story uh comes courtesy of Artharin and Shetrel. Thank you very yeah. much, Artharin. And it's about time, especially given how many yes. people don't <laughs> really see .mpeg files nowadays anymore. Maybe a bit late. But uh They're hey Microsoft. What? Yeah. Just uh mm -hmm. open source WMA and WMVs. <laughs> please. This is it, what you're really worried about is yeah. MPEG layer four, but by the time MPEG layer four is open that's going to be in 2027 but i was surprised i mean genuinely was i was like wait a minute i, I think red hat has been the last holdout not to shit but i mean that's been a thing way before fedora that was a red hat thing before fedora i was like oh you want to play yeah. mp3 wah, wah. i mean it was doable but you had to mm -hmm. install like the kodak extras i believe it was called back yep. in the day or the ugly as it became known in the Fedora core years. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neat. Yeah. And, you know, what's what was neat about this article, of course, it mentions 8.263. And, you know, does anyone really want that? That was what we used to, uh, to, to uh, use for the real video codec back in the day. So that one, uh, no, hey, we wouldn't. I watched <laughs> a lot of our MVBs, Joe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we have better options now. <laughs> but as far as MPEG-1 and MPEG-2 go, uh, that's absolutely wonderful. And MPEG-1 and 2 are still capable of very high quality video and, and resolution. And um, um, what was really cool was in the early 90s, in the days of video CDs with the advent of MPEG-1, and later, as super video CDs and DVDs were becoming a thing with MPEG-2, I authored and produced animations for musicians, for concerts, as a college student. And that was really, really great. And actually, it wasn't for these formats and uh, people seeing my video CDs and DVDs. Um, it it um, 
I wouldn't maybe have ended up as an animator. Actually, it was the bread and butter butter of the broadcast industry. And that's what we all had to use for our demo reels and such. <laughs> so. <laughs> right on, and right on. Really cool. Nice. <laughs> so, didn't we talk about Open Suzy and how much we love it, except just not on the desktop last week? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was in the feedback. But yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, but there's enough bit of news that may make yes. it a little bit more desktop friendly. Yeah. So as we talked about last week and our feedback, XFCE is now a default desktop manager available once again in the open SUSE Tumbleweed DVD and net installer. And which is really awesome. And there are live XFCE images for open SUSE Tumbleweed as well. And now the open build service to customize your own OpenSUSE distro has XFCE as an option, which is really, really great. It, it'll really uh, slim down and make those, um, just, uh, those your own spins run even faster. One of the things I saw that they've thrown XFCE up on the OBS, which is not open broadcast, it's open build service. <laughs> and that's kind of neat. Um, I'm really happy to see that because it can be a bit hairy building XFCE. Even if you've been doing it for a while, like if you just walked into it and haven't done it, but to have that being pulled right off the Get Master branch, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, Pedro, do you have any thoughts on this? Oh, the German mm -hmm. translation, Uber. That's awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, the thing that um, pleased me was, oh, hey, you're not limiting people to GNOME. That's good. <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's all i got <laughs> well you you're clearly yeah. aware the only way to install a different desktop is by putting a different spin or distribution entirely that's how linux works at least some yeah. people well that's how think most uh, ubuntu based distros work but hey <laughs> yeah, i've become very adept at ripping those parts out uh, <laughs> yeah Visual yeah. Studio, we mentioned it last week. Uh, code without trackers. We're talking about VS Codium, an open source Visual Studio code. You guessed it. Without trackers, because it's Microsoft, man. <laughs> and we learned that there's telemetry and calculator. And listen, I get yeah, it, Microsoft, is. but really? <laughs> uh, yeah, they put it together. It's tracking free, free open source build of Microsoft Visual Studio code created so the developers will not have to build VS Code from source, which, yes, telemetry and trackers and so you can have all the horror that is visual studio code with none of that tracking kind of a roundabout way of how they're doing it but at the end of it's still done and it's got i guess some that's one way around the license <laughs> yeah it's on good on. i mean if you hate yourself that much <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you hate yourself you just use visual studio isn't that right monster cameron don't no. worry we'll get to your feedback it, uh <laughs> it's good that we have familiar familiar tools mm -hmm. no that do. is actually very yeah, important all joking and, aside. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the reason that uh, PowerShell is doing as well as it has, uh, being a little snap that you can download and just play around with on Linux. And I guess there is an entire industry of people who like Visual Studio and, you know, getting the short mm -hmm. bus edition as it may be without any of the tracking bits is very, very appealing. Uh, for me, I just say use Genie or Atom if you have an irrational hatred for your DDR sticks. Although, yeah, I guess Visual Studio Codium will do the same thing because it's an Electron app. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, there there have actually been a lot of complaints of Visual Studio Code running slowly on proprietary OSs, such as Mac OS. So maybe this detract uh, alternative will do just the trick and run much faster. I'm, I'm curious to see the results on that. <laughs> Strider, Genie has... Plugins. <laughs> Don't be like that, man. Don't be. What do we have? Well, uh, Pinephone. Yes, yes, we do. So the fine folks at uh, Pine64 have decided, you know what, this uh, low end ish uh, ARM laptop market is all very well and good. But, you know, those low end devices that everyone carries around in their pockets could possibly be a very good market alternative. And so mm -hmm. they have decided to post some photos of the dev kit that they're working on. It's currently running Plasma Mobile. Uh, it's the 
like KDE mobile um, implementation. You could actually uh, enable that on any regular KDE installation. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Uh, and it's currently, they say that it could sell as low as $149, which is very good. And if this turns out to be the low-end model with a couple of proprietary compromises here and there, I'm guessing they're not going to go out of their way to get fully um, free software uh, hardware, like the find folks at Librem because Librem also has uh, the Librem 5 in work, but that's a $650 phone. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the high end we're talking about here. And 150 bucks for the Pine phone is, it puts it squarely into the neat purchase category. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you know, this is shaping up to be a nice entry-level Linux smartphone. Um, I was really impressed with uh, um, what the article was uh, talking about, how, yep. you know, fast it was running. So that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I'm down yeah. with it, but, you know, 649 to walk in with a dev kit. Yes. <laughs> That's the Libra one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all free software you know all the hardware has been tested and retested to make sure it works completely free of proprietary stuff which is great <laughs> and the further i pricey. am from a mobile phone the better anyway no <laughs> there's two right there <laughs> you got problems man let it go okay uh that's let's just get straight ridiculous with this uh running a full desktop environment on not a raspberry yes. pi yes a on what? a Kindle, oh, no. on a Kindle with an e-ink display. Yeah, install Arch and a full LXDE desktop on a newer Arch. Amazon Kindle with an e-ink display. <laughs> um, this was tested on an eighth generation Kindle. And um, how it works is the Arch installation and file system has to be mounted as a loopback device because the Kindle storage file system uses FAT32. And I've done had to do many loopback devices especially in the past, in the in the DOS days, <laughs> then um, you change root into the Arch file system. And this is just a, the article goes on, uh, um, uh, shows all the uh, instructions for doing so, and it's not very hard to do. And, you know, I had installed mPlayer on my Kindle Touch back in 2011, so I could play internet, radio, videos, and music. And yeah, YouTube videos played back at hey, an even slower like frame users? rate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Maybe yeah, it's a good and... thing it doesn't have a backlight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the frame rate definitely was an issue, but hey, the battery life is great, so you can't complain too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, kids, for those of you watching the uh, the video version right now, this is why refresh rates matter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I have no problem with this. I mean, admittedly, it 100% falls in the uh, questionable category. But I love things that I can hold up as a shining example. A testament to man's arrogance. Like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's no reason to ever do this. And I fully approve. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> My Kindle, I have the first gen Kindle. I couldn't do anything with it, but I guarantee you that stupid thing still charged. I probably oh, haven't yeah. turned it on in yeah, probably. six years. <laughs> e it's, it's not good yes. for re anything but reading. But yeah, that's really neat, though. That's, that's neat to look it's at. It's cool. 100%. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I was perusing our Linux, and was it uh, Squirt7744? Came up with a Python script. Oh, Python, is there anything you can't do poorly? Um, an automatic switch to the strongest Wi-Fi signal with the help of his simple Python script and network manager. Um, this will be in the show notes along with everything else. Links to it. So this mm -hmm. is supposedly handy if you're going between access points in the house and what, you haven't set up mesh networking? Is that the deal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it network the switch your PY, yeah, it's going to jump to the strongest <laughs> signal in your house. I thought that was worth giving a mention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, oh, whatever yeah. you do, don't stop at the halfway point between two access points while running this. That That's how you lose your internet connection. <laughs> if you have a bunch of like routers, like dual band 2.4 and 5G, setting up your yeah. homebrew mesh network's pretty easy. 
Because you can use the 5G for the backhaul. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I, I've had issues with this before. And um, I think I'd like to try it uh, because, you know, I do run 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, even on just one one router. So um, uh, this this might work pretty well. <laughs> I do too now. I finally uh, cut the yeah. 2.4 gigahertz uh for the router in the studio because of light bulbs. Welcome to first world <laughs> problems. Um, <laughs> also had to set the QoS on light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a true thing. Hey man, uh, that, that Duke boy has written a thing over at Linux. Journal. Yes, he has yeah. a very, very um, long thing. Uh, yeah. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> well, I have things to say about Brian Lunduke, but to be fair, he did do a good job with this article. Basically, he interviewed three um, developing young men uh, who are get, just getting into the world of technology and the world of Linux. And basically, he asked them a bunch of questions like, what do you plan on doing? What are your plans and how will those involve Linux? It's like, how did you start out? with Linux at first, and two of them actually had a very similar experience. It's like, oh, yeah, we got Raspberry Pis really early on as we were starting to get into programming, and our family is like, okay, there you go, there's a Raspberry Pi. And that's <laughs> that's kind of awesome. That's really awesome. So, yeah, introducing a whole new generation to Linux is great, and I hope that uh, in the not-too-distant future we will actually start seeing the mainstream laptops come with a Linux offering because even those that come without a operating mm. system installed, they still come with free DOS. Why not, you know, actually have an operating system that can drive the whole of the hardware that you're currently selling? Because Linux will let you do that. So Same. you don't have to offer support for the hardware you're selling? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, yo, you need free DOS support? We got you, fam. <laughs> yeah, it can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I know, noticed uh, what was really cool is one of the kids was talking about how it's, you know, Linux is easier to install and it has a nice user interface. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's just, just awesome. And um, you don't have to worry about the... the, the constant updates by these proprietary operating systems uh you can do it when you want to hey, <laughs> and in the, microsoft's and, defense yeah. they're like we're going to tone down on that we're still going to do it though no we're not going to listen to you but we're, we're going to give you more of a warning yeah mm -hmm. oh boy and it's i i read through the article it's like oh this is the future of linux is it Every single one yeah. of them is like, yeah, I still use Windows on my personal computer because reasons. And it's like, oh, so the future of Linux is dual booting. Yeah. Well, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so as we were wrapping about at the beginning of the show, a little bit of news, not necessarily Linux related, is 100% um, allegedly confirmed mm. the... Ryzen 3000 support for the 300 series motherboards. And they do, okay, no translate. Oh, oh buckle in, kids. Uh, <laughs> an email to support from MSI was causing uh, quite a stir. In this email, Reddit user asked uh, compatibility for X370, Ryzen, oh, brain, uh, Ryzen 3000. Okay. So. What it boils down to, I think, hang on one moment here. I was not There's prepared the to, to think. There we go. Anything <laughs> with a Giza not not 7.x are said to be compatible with third gen Ryzen processors. MSI has now officially commented on the situation and made it. I can read better than this, kids. I'm not used to <laughs> doing So most models mm -hmm. with the X370 and B350 mm -hmm. chip sets will support the third generation Ryzen. Boom. Put a bow on it. Deal with it. Ha. Yep. Still got it. <laughs> and uh, in my case, it's like, ooh, I have an Asus B350 Prime Plus. And I was uh, reading through the um, like the Asus list. It's like, oh, there it is. Wasn't and the... then I went to the Asus website and, oh, look, there's the BIOS yeah. update with a GSA 0.072. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dude was looking at whether or not, because he had bought the X370 power to titanium, mm -hmm. which was MSI. like the most oh. expensive one they made. 
Yeah. And he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're what? Uh-uh. And MSI was just like, uh, no, it's it will only be supported in the B450 and X470 chipsets. And I guess uh, the internet as a whole felt, you know, the disturbance in the force. And they yeah. decided maybe it's not a good, de- a good idea to piss <laughs> these people off. We were talking about this in Discord. Um, go hop yeah. in on Discord and check this out yesterday. <laughs> because we'd been getting mixed messages. Yay, nay, maybe. And when this all started, it's like I, I genuinely wholeheartedly believe that all the manufacturers were sitting back waiting to see if anyone was going to blink. Cause you know, like, <laughs> I, I, but Asus MSI is like, wait a minute. Okay. If nobody does it, we just make them all buy new motherboards or we only do the 400 series up. Then anyone with a B 300 series and below, they got to buy new motherboards. But if one of you other guys do it, somebody blinks. That mm-hmm. means that we all have to go back and, no more selling new motherboards to these people <laughs> because you know, you don't want to be that one company that's like, this is completely impossible. Then company B's like, nah, it's possible here. Buy it from us. Never buy anything from them again. Like understood <laughs> other company. I'll only buy from you now. Yep. And that's uh, the mentality because well, whether or not some people agree, AMD is still the budget option. So Providing people with an upgrade path without having to replace just about everything that your computer connects to, which is a motherboard, Uh. that is very important. And motherboards nowadays, if you want to actually take advantage of everything that your CPU can do, are pricey. They're very pricey. Oh, yes. We're talking Mm -hmm. 100 bucks at least. Oh, sweetheart. Tell tell me about (laughs) Motherboards <laughs> and prices. <laughs> and 200 yeah, for no, a good one. Not everyone just spent 200 and something on one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was a used low-end board. Used yes. low-end. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm honestly hoping that X399 will see third generation thread rippers. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Awesome. I get to relive. My, my horror is not even. <laughs> it's just getting warmed up. So... <laughs> All and right. That's, that's good news, though. That's good news if yeah, you'll be able to do Yeah, really great. And here's mm-hmm. the other really good news is the 2700s are about to get stupid cheap. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, really? I oh, mean, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they've been getting right around the, like, 190, 200 price right now, so... The two, uh, the twenty seven hundred X is still, you know, the best selling high end quote unquote uh, processor out there right now, and it's, yeah, it's still hovering around three hundred bucks. But uh, if the trend keeps going, we'll have a two fifty in about a couple of months. <laughs> we yeah. will see. Yes. So uh, before we get out of here, Jill, you had a chance to talk with Katrine. Yeah, tell us about yeah. it before we get into it. Awesome. So I got to interview at Scale17x, uh, Catherine Dreckman, Director of Digital Experience at the Linux Journal and co-host of the Reality 2.0 podcast at Linux Journal. And I was so excited to interview her and that she was there. <laughs> so that was, it was a really, uh, really, really fun to meet her and uh, to just chalk chop. So that was really cool. All right, <laughs> let's check it out. And we're here at the Linux Journal booth. Linux Journals are big supporters of Linux Gamecast and LWDW. And I'm actually here with Catherine um, Dreckman, who does um, the Reality 2.0 podcast. She, it's, a, it's a brand new podcast she just started. And I watched the first episode, and it was incredible. It was excellent. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we started it in October. Um, we started it just as a, uh, it started out of a conversation I had with Doc Searles, our editor in chief, um, where we just, you know, we had all these great ideas that we wanted to just kind of hang out and talk about in a kind of casual and friendly way. And it just sort of evolved organically. And, um, we, it's a very simple production. Um, you know, we get together, uh, on a call really, and put this thing together. We have guests, uh. We talk a lot about uh, privacy issues, mm-hmm. which I think you know are very important to all of us. Um, we talk a little bit about security. We have a great, great group of writers, fortunately, um, with an external that we can kind of draw knowledge from, and that's always been fun. Actually, the current episode that's up right now on our uh, website is with Reuven Lerner, who's 
one of my favorite Linux journal columnists. He writes a lot yes. about web development, so that's kind of my area. Um, and he talks about just uh, getting started with Python, which is fun, you know? Yes, awesome. Um, but yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a great platform. Um, and frankly, it gives me a, an excuse to talk to Doc a lot more. Uh, <laughs> and we have really fun conversations, and he's, you know, he's just a really genuinely cool guy, and, and, and we, you know, we come up with some great stuff. We were just talking earlier about how some of the best conversations are pre-roll and post-roll. Yeah. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we've uh, gotten a little bit better about making sure to record everything in case we get some really good gems. Yes. But yeah, podcasting is a new thing for me. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in this sort of audio production. I have a little bit, you know, we talked about college radio earlier. Yes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been, you know, it's been gratifying. And the best, the best part is here. A few people have actually come up to me yes. and said they listen. And, yeah. you know, it just takes one person, you know, yes. to feel like it, it feels very validating. <laughs> so. Yeah. So Catherine came by the Linux Chicks LA booth yesterday and I was so excited to see her because there's so few women doing podcasting and, and, you know, bit casting and it's just it, I was happy you were here <laughs> okay, well, I was happy to see y'all too yeah it's um there, there are not that many of us we live in a yes we very live and work bubble. in a uh, <laughs> pretty male dominated field yes <laughs> we kind of feel like we need to stick together a little bit yeah we understand each other's struggles definitely yeah. well thank you so much Catherine You've thank been... you I'm really glad you came by yeah I'm you're turning such red a joy. yes <laughs> And we'd also love to do a more full full interview with you on Linux sure, Weekly sure, Day sure. Wednesday. Yeah, I'd love to. I could, <laughs> you know, um, I'd be happy to talk about just the the struggles and the the joys of of putting out regular content in this format because it's yes. different for us. You yes, know? definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. Oh, and thank you once again, uh, Catherine, for doing that wonderful interview with us. And we look forward to having you again here on LWDW uh, live. That'll be awesome. Awesome. <laughs> fantastic work. We have a few more of those to uh, get out. Stay tuned for that. But first, shameless self-promotion. That's right. Uh, if you want to help us pay the bills, <laughs> this is the only way we do it. We sell merch. We have Patreon. That's awesome. That's the best way to do it. Keeps us ad free and keeps our... Keats? Keats the lights Keats. on. This is what happens. <laughs> this is just hey, start. I haven't butchered Keats. the English language today. Dude, yet. my brain is doing yeah. it. Right now. <laughs> I, it I, I, so I, we have a couple of Amazon affiliate links, a uh, couple of different countries, including Deutschland. So if you want to buy something through that, we get a taste of that. Uh, we do have a wish list. It's more like a shopping list. Check it every day. Different things show up and disappear. And of course, Humble Bundle. But Favorite part is being able to throw your name in the credits as a Patreon. You get access to mm -hmm. our Discord and mm -hmm. uh, our Creep Show. We do an entire show that you might not even know about if you like this nonsense. Every Saturday mm -hmm. before we go live, called the uh, Pre Pre Super Shows, and that we invite you to come into Discord and participate. So, we got to do a little plug. Get a little bit of plug mm -hmm. because I got one of these. Oh. <laughs> Someone Yay. is going on the Frank wall. <laughs> no, somebody's just reaffirming their top position. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. He's, he's the guy with the shapes throw a little bit of glitter sand. He's like, yeah, <laughs> just, just so you know. That's right. Um, Mike sent a note because this is one of the things that I'm contractually obligated to read this. But it's Mike, so it's never horrible. Mike Ryan. <laughs> Hi, Linux Gamecast. Your wish was entirely too long. Wish list. Oh man, I thought it was a long wish. <laughs> Hopefully I could knock a few of these off. It's more manageable. Love you guys. Again, Mike. Ouch. Um Mike G. Yep. Aww. Mike G. We and love you, Mike G. <laughs> along with Haplo, who last week got us the power supply. We're building a new editing rig. Uh mm -hmm. Mike picked up a 960 Evo. Look at that. Nice. So nice. Sexy. And some memory and RAM. <laughs> Yay. So mm -hmm. that was my kick in the joints. Like, all right, spend money. I was like, fine, do I gotta <laughs> tune in Saturday? I, I bought friends for all of these. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Most importantly, yes. we got the Ryzen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't even opened it yet. I'll make a video with I, I'm not gonna put you through as like, hey, look, it's the thirteenth thousand person on YouTube to build a Ryzen system. It don't give you an it's overview. It's the last person on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you, man. Uh, yeah. oh. It'll be the end. 
That's really. Let's get into a slice of pie. How about that? Mm-hmm. Indeed. Yeah. So, Jill, uh, <laughs> yeah, why yum. don't you start us off this week? Okay. For the first time this year, Raspbian has been updated and offers Linux kernel 4.1. Point one four point nine eight Chromium seventy two VLC three point zero point six and performance improvements to the SDL library to name but a few. Oh wow! This this was a huge update, um, and uh, really great, a really great first of the year update. They also updated. Um, they made improvements uh, to writing to the flash drive. So um, there would be uh, less errors encountered as well in that and, and, and uh, faster performance. So there, okay. di- make sure to look at the show notes because there's lots of uh, really good updates. If you go to their website, they, they list all the ones that they uh, added to yeah, this new version. Yeah, they even borrowed a couple of the um, new <laughs> features that the other Raspberry Pi specific distros have been introducing, like yes. Ubuntu Mate, which we've talked Ubuntu about Mate, uh, yeah. a lot. And yeah, they're also bringing some of those. It's like, oh, we could use that. That would make things a lot easier for everyone. Give me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, the, mm-hmm. being able to strider some code is one of the oh, beautiful yeah. things about Linux. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of the great things about open source in general. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I like that bit of code. Well, what license do you use? Oh, cool. That's the same as mine. Neat. Yeah. You can build upon <laughs> itself. That's good to see. Um, one other bit of Raspberry Pi news is uh, mm-hmm. got the browse. <laughs> yes, yes, it does, and you will be praying the uh, playing the breasts, uh, paying. God, no, you did it to me, Ven. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you will be paying the brass tax uh, if you do decide to set this up, because this person, like I'm sure everyone else on the internet, has a bit of a problem getting up in the morning. And he decided, you know what, the, the clock just isn't doing it. I just knock it off and it dies. It's like, yeah, so let's do something different. And he set up a little servo uh, plugged into a Raspberry Pi. And the, res- uh, the other end of the servo is uh, yanking on a little bell chain. And it makes the bell go ding, ding, ding. As he points out in the video, it's very, very loud. And I was looking at that. It's like, oh, yeah, that'd get me up but get me out of bed in the morning and it would get the bell ripped off of the ceiling and whatever was holding that bell to the ceiling <laughs> would get ripped off as well because i would just go bananas on it <laughs> i don't know man if if a bell ever looked at me and was like wake up boo <laughs> i would look at the bell and i would say shut up drugs <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know that oh that sound. Goodness. Even just the video with the sound, you know, yeah, m- it's mixed a- down very low. It yeah. was still, you no, know. no, yeah. Sounds like a horrible <laughs> idea. I wholly approve of doing this to someone else. <laughs> Well, we know that uh, Jordan may need it sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you should set one up for him. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, alarm clocks, I don't use them, so... But yeah, I could inflict that terror on some notes. I mean, just yeah. <laughs> looking at the project, if you've been thinking about just uh, activating servos, mm-hmm. which that's good to learn. I mean, give it to yeah. me. I, I don't know. Find a use for it. That's not. I can't tell you to do anything that's not nefarious because that's the only thing my brain's thinking about with this (laughs) (laughs) including this project we just showed you that yes yeah (laughs) Uh, hey if you have a nefarious project that you would like to share with us uh, how can they do that pedro you can do that very easily you can always uh wrap it up in a very conspicuous looking package and totally write totally not bees on it uh or if you actually want us to get your uh message you could go to linuxgamecast.com you hit the contact button you make sure to pick lwdw from the show box and that's it you just write us your name your email your subject and your message we will be very very happy to feature your message right here right now like we're doing with shane because shane yeah. wrote is like is there a way to get rid Mm -hmm. of Pulse Audio completely and only use also for sound. I'm sick and tired of (laughs) choppy sound and Pulse always trying to use my HDMI port for audio. Thanks. So, um, yes, there Mm -hmm. is, Shane. You uninstall Pulse Audio. It just falls back to also. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that in a minute. 
Um, yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> how are all the applications going to fly in 2019? With you will only be able to play, um, by default, you will only be able to play audio from one source at a time per sync, but it'll work. Question mark. <laughs> I mean, the last time I did that was, I don't know, 2015, 2016. Yeah. Before you take Pager's advice blindly, why don't you run like <laughs> Pulse Audio dash K, kill Pulse Audio, then take a crack it, with it. It just auto spawns again. Yeah. You have to disable yeah. the auto spawn. Naturally, and also, you, you know, here at LGC, we use <laughs> Pavu Control. I definitely recommend installing Pavu Control instead of using the default uh, sound manager in in the in your desktop manager. Pavu and control most of the choppiness actually you. comes. Yeah. Go ahead. No, no, oh. no, no. Go ahead. I, I need to get schooled on audio. <laughs> no, uh, most of the choppiness, uh, at least. From experience, it comes from the applications that still rely on Alsa, and you need you need to use the Alsa plugin for Pulse Audio. That mm, yeah. is where, at least on in my use case, ninety percent of mm. the buffer underruns and choppiness come from because anything that uses Pulse Audio natively works. Mm. Yeah, very true. Well, usually Pulse Audio is always going to be tying into also also is just the hardware. Um, also, it was kind of like the software extract abstraction layer to also mm -hmm. being on top. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So if you're on Kubuntu or Debian or like that, you can do Pulse Audio purge and that'll wipe it out. And good yeah. <laughs> nothing's yeah. final. I guess that's really what I'm trying to get at is that's a come. You're not going to break anything. This isn't Windows. You can <laughs> put Pulse Audio back in. Yeah. Pavu Control. Good on you, Canonical. You at least ship that now as a default yeah. when I click on a sound manager. Um, that's going to be your new BFF. Use that to set up your syncs and also learn to live with it. Because I also use Jack. And pretty much everything will work with Jack if you're comfortable building it from source. So I don't recommend mm. it. Yeah. <laughs> you think Aww. just setting up Jack is difficult? Try building it. Oh, no. Setting up Jack's a breeze. Making it work correctly. <laughs> that, that's a practice. <laughs> like lawyers yeah. and doctors. It's something you practice. All right. The, the other other thing I was thinking for Shane is to update uh, Pulse Audio. That that can really really um, improve. Uh, a lot of times they fix bugs, and and that you know I've done that before myself, and I I keep an updated Pulse Audio. So that's a good thing to do. All right. Mm -hmm. Part two Ooh. comes from Cameron. You know him, you love him. VS Code <laughs> is awesome! Exclamation board! I just threw this in. It was a little lazy bit of mail, but I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Visual Studio <laughs> Code is pretty dang good, comma. Stop the lead expletive on it. On it. <laughs> <laughs> I said I had an okay debugger. It's a Microsoft product, and you're a Microsoft Windows user solely, so stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, I guess we haven't uh, poo pooed on AMD in a long time, and so Cameron <laughs> is running out of ammunition. <laughs> So you know, now he's defending the, Visual the, Studio Code. This is my favorite thing because I got room at the top of that shelf of my AMD <laughs> collection for this. Just enough. And I like to send people a picture of that. And you're like, you're an NVIDIA shill. And I'm like, you run an I Intel processor. I get boxes. Go get your Threadripper <laughs> box, peasant. <laughs> yeah. I'll get a Ryzen 3000 box as soon as AMD <laughs> releases it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for showing up and joining and participating in this Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. So we're going to roll some credits. Yay! Play some hot dubstepy tunes. Yeah. Maybe. I don't really have credits. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> Yay! So... There is a difference between open broadcasting studio and open build system. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I'm kind of glad neither Susie or uh, the OBS <laughs> folks decided to go at each other because it's like, trademark. Yes, I, I went dyslexic on that myself. <laughs> dyslexic? <laughs> dyslexic. <laughs>
Well, I guess Jill was the only one who hadn't uh, butchered the English language today, so there it is. <laughs> I am more irritated at Google. Why did my translate? Oh, sh never mind. I know why, because mm -hmm. I'm using not the show browser. I'm using the regular browser, and I have that disabled. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. We love you. <laughs>